tell her, uh, I love you so much. Come on, tell that person. <laughs> praise God. Uh, praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord a clap of praise? I would like us to all stand and uh, let's read really ourselves uh, to receive the Word of God. My son is yet preparing uh, for, for our slides. Anyways, I would like to preach a message this morning that I am entitled Crossing at the Other Side. Huh? It's like you are standing uh, here in this band, and there is there is this flowing river before you, and seemingly like it's quite impossible to go to the other side. However, the other side is your number one destination or destiny, and the number two, the other side, brothers and sisters, is a promise from the Lord, and the third is. I see this is our destination, it is the promise of the Lord. This is your only place that you will have to go. I mean, there are no other options, there are no, there are no other choice. Now, I would like to uh, lead us in a study of this. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is the word of the Lord. I would like us to open our Bibles right now to the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. Amen. Let's share Bibles together. Joshua chapter thir chapter 3 rather. Verses 14 and uh, 17. Praise God. And just to, to give us a little background uh, of our message today our passage today this was the portion in the Old Testament where God's people minutes only minutes away they were to cross or days away they were about to cross into the promised land and as I mentioned there was this river actually the body of Jordan River it was the body of waters of the Jordan River now if you're ready Go with me, I shall lead us in the reading. Here we go. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. The waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Sarethan, and those flowing down toward the Sea of Araba, the salt sea, were completely cut off, and the people passed over opposite Jericho on the last verse 17 now the priests bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan and all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan God bless the reading of his word let's just commit ourselves to God and we're going to pray a problem we have uh, with our slides. Anyways, will let this be all right if I will do it uh, manually without uh, without the slides. I will deliver the word of God, uh, you know, with with my bare sermon, uh, without the audio uh, audiovisual presentation. Will you promise me to give your undivided attention? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Now, have you heard uh, or rather read the word ecstasy? 
I will give us uh, the correct definition according to the Merriam's Webster. Ecstasy is a state of very great happiness, extreme delight. I would like to read it back. Ecstasy is a state of very great happiness. Or it is it is a level where a person is on an extreme delight. Are you with me? When you passed your examination and your expectations were, you could not suppose to make it, but the grace of God was with you, you made it instead, you're very happy, extremely happy. You were ecstatic at that moment, at that time. You were in your, in your needs and uh, walls were before you. And you believe on the promises to what God is saying in His Word. Instead of worrying, instead of, you know, going to fear, in your needs, you call on the name of God. You pray. And for how many days as you waited for the answer of God, voila, the answer came unexpectedly. You are very much surprised. By the way, let me tell you once again that our God, God Almighty, our Father, loves to surprise. Loves surprises rather. That's why every day express or expect surprises from our from our God. Amen? Amen. Let's give him a clap of praise. <laughs> and when the answers came to your deed, you thought that uh, they, they're no more a way out, but at the last minute, unexpectedly, the hand of the Lord moved, and there was the answer. You become very happy. Now, that experience is what you call ecstatic or ecstasy. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Now, the passage that we are about, or we read a while ago, is an example to uh, this word that I'm sharing where the people were in mixed emotions the people of God because their dreams were about to become a reality can you imagine this group of people the people of God in the Old Testament the Jewish race have been waiting for the promise to be fulfilled for 430 years can you imagine that must, that must be very long there are a lot of us, you just say, ouch, if uh, this is for you, or to simply say amen. When uh, we go for the way, that the way becomes not just days, but weeks, and we start to be boring. And, uh, you know, we begin to whine and complain and, like, you know, uh, Try to ask the Lord or try, try to question heaven. Where are you, Lord? Where are your promises? I'd like us to say the word waiting. Are you still with me, amen? amen? I'd like us to express excitedly. I mean, show to God that you're excited, you know, for new things from Him this morning. Say, I mean, smile and feel it. Come on. And I'd like, I'd like us to say the word waiting. Waiting. Uh, by the way, uh, usual tendency, uh, human tendency, when I away become uh, emotionally, emotionally steered, you know, when we hear the promises. And this is where our character is being built by the Lord. When after hearing the promise, we become happy, and then the waiting, the process begun, or begins, before the fulfillment, this is where our patience is being built. This is where our, our, our trust are being founded inside of us. This is where, uh, you know, our faith unto the Lord, come what may, or despite of all around happening, you know, are being solidified. Because we know that we know God cannot lie and God is faithful. Amen. Despite maybe things are going wrong around, Maybe the opposite are the ones happening all around, but you still are insisting to believe that God is true to His Word, isn't it? Amen. Come on, let's praise Him. <laughs> it was way beginning yet from their father. I mean, forefathers from Jacob's time. And uh, to, the, to the 12 uh, 
to the 12 elders, you know, the 12 children of, of Jacob, when they went or entered into the promised land, uh, way in the beginning, the Lord, the Lord God Almighty, the God of their forefathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God told them, you won't stay here forever. Egypt is not your place. This is only your transit uh, location. We'll only stay here temporarily, but God Almighty promised, I shall bring you back to the land where you came from. It is a land that flows with milk and honey. That's why the Bible calls it the promised land. Hello, amen? amen. Now, from the time of Jacob to the time of the darkness is in Israel, now, hear me, the extent of it goes to as much as 430 years until the time of Moses. And Moses rose up. He was the prophet called by God. And he, he spoke this word of uh, words of prophecy to the people, prophetic word. God is about to bring you into the promised land. And you know the story. There was, there was those struggles and for, uh, for a period of 10 months, God would have to perform, you know, signs and wonders and miracles before, uh, before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh would have to be broken. I mean, his will, his iron will would have to be broken by God Almighty. And the people would have to be convinced by the signs and wonders and the miracles that indeed, eventually at the end, you know, the 2 million Jews who now were multiplied by God for 430 years, you know, in, in Egypt, were convinced and they bowed their heads. And uh, they come to the Lord and, uh, and declare, indeed, God Almighty, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is the only God in all the earth. And that's how they followed the trail. Moses before them, two million Jews. You know the story, they crossed the first crossing. He crossed the Red Sea, and they were now in the wilderness. But you see, something again went uh, not very right as, as the Lord led them through the wilderness before the Promised Land. That the travel that was only to be 11 days dragged to be two years. And went on because uh, of their unbelief, because of their pride, and listen, because of their murmurings, I want you to smile on to somebody. Turn to someone else and do like this. Say, be careful to your complaints. <laughs> their murmurings. It went to be 40 years. Can you imagine? It's supposed to be only 11. Literally 11 days. When to be two years, and now, 40 years. Think about it. I mean, uh, to those who waited long, you know, the, 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 the desperations they were feeling, I cannot just imagine. You know, when we wait only for three months, you just imagine how the boredom you are feeling. When it seems before you are endless, and uh, you don't have solid idea, concrete idea, palmable idea, what are, what are way ahead of you. That's what you call faith. Amen? Amen? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. When you walk seemingly in the darkness, when you're feeling, you, they're not all around, except pitch black darkness. Now all you could do is just to close your eyes and to believe the promises of God. To believe the person who told you, I shall be able to bring you indeed to a land that flows with milk and honey. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about our God. Let's give him a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Now, gone under 430 years. And gone are the 40 years in the wilderness. Now there were this new generation, the generation of Joshua. Joshua generation. And the Lord telling them, they were standing, you know, on the uh, riverbed. 
the opposite of the Jordan River bed. Now, uh, after after uh, the Arabian, Arabian Arabian Desert, the Sinai the Sinai Desert, because you know the river at the opposite is already Canaan, 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 or the Promised Land, or later on the nation of or the state of Israel. They were standing there, these two million people. Can you imagine for 40 years, these kids who were only, you know, in their cream and uh, they grew up in all, in all of the provisions and in the care of God. They, ne they never have ta tasted any food, only except for manna. You know the story about manna? They never have tasted uh, corn, they never have tasted barley or all of those other food. They never have tried to buy new new clothes or new jeans or new sandals. No new nothing. Every day what we saw were the miracles of God. Rather, those those uh, creative things falling falling uh, falling on before their eyes. When they, when they were small after the, after their mothers gave the birth, uh, Papa and Mama saw them. Uh, you know, a, a small, I, I don't know, what's, what's the name of it? Uh, is that as well a sandal? Mama and Papa saw a, a homemade sandal, you know, for the feet of a little baby, a newborn. And the Bible said, as those generations were growing, including their clothes, and all of their wares, for example, the sandals, the one I'm saying, grow with them. The wearing out as part of corruption did not work in their generation. Can you imagine? You know, when, you, we, when we buy our, uh, our, proper, our properties in the process of time, they, they start to regress. They're wearing out. They wear out. Two years ago, the jeans that you have used to be really fair. Uh, very nice looking two years ago but after two years you know the jeans you have are, are now faded it's what you call wearing out hello amen. amen but you know what what those people had in the wilderness were now wearing out instead there was that protection you know the, the same color uh, were still glossy after 40 years I mean, the sandal that was sewn, you know, homemade by Mama and Papa, were also growing with them. I mean, those those were days of miracles. I tell you, those were historic times as we can see and read them in the Bible, in the Word of God. Are you with me, amen? amen. But you know what? They were longing, thank God, for all of those you know, uh, graces and miracles that they experience, all of those creative miracles, but something is yet calling them, pulling them. Because there was this better promise God had for them. It was the land. Because for 400 something how many years, they have been slaves. And now God already freed them. I, I tell you, this is quite another thing. It's, it's one thing to be uh, a literal slave where the bars are there, where the chains are there, where one is in servitude and, and he is serving a master. It's one thing. But it's quite another where a person though has all of the rights around. But you know, his attitude, his outlook, his perspective, the way he sees himself, the way he acts, I mean the mindset, the way he thinks, he seems to be a slave. Are you with me? Are you there? Amen. Let's give God the Lord a praise. But those were the people of God. In spite that God already set them free, there, there was that, uh, the earlier generation, there was still that, you know, uh, bondage they have inside. But this time God was about, God was about to give them, ladies and gentlemen, a breakthrough. It was now the new generation, the Joshua's generation. 
they were standing in the river bank. I cannot just imagine on the back of in the back side of my head, or rather the back of my head, where all of the people were in mixed emotions. Can someone say with me, mixed emotions? <laughs> mixed emotion is your feeling where you cannot describe what is inside. Though you are crying, but you are happy. And you are happy, but you cannot express them to the full, exactly to the joy, the depths of your joy. As I have said, ecstatic. People here were ecstatic because they were about to enter to the reality of their dreams. Hello, are you still there? Amen. Amen. Maybe, by the grace of God, we can feel the same. Are you, are, you, are you still there? Are you still with me? Perhaps we can also feel the same when what the promises of God gave us for some time. Those promises are about to become realization. Huh? When, when, when those dreams the Lord planted in your heart and God is about to bring you to reality. Maybe we can we can feel the same like those people in the past, you know, uh, Joshua and those two, mil, uh, two million Jew. We can be feeling ecstatic as well. We can be feeling mixed emotions as well. When the whole of your life you have been living in poverty, and all suddenly God is coming to you, and God is telling you, "My child, poverty no more." Time now to be blessed. Amen. You've been feeling ecstatic, amen? amen? And in the whole of your life, you were living in struggles and in darkness and in pain, and God coming to you, and God telling you, no more struggles, no more pain, no more darkness, but time now to be blessed, my child. Amen. You will be feeling ecstatic, amen? amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Now, here is the message, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing here in the name of the Lord. I'm standing here not just about to give some remarks or just, just to make, you know, some comments uh, from the Word. Now, listen to me. This is what the will of God. God wants us to already bring us across to our promised land. God, now, hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Hear me well. God wants us to already, God already, God wants to already bring us across to our promised land. Amen. Praise God. So you tell another brother, another sister to you, to your side, and say, God wants to already bring us across. Come on. God wants to already bring us across. But I have you this question. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to go on the other side? The other side is the, is the fulfillment of the promise. Now the, the right question, the more appropriate, or rather the right answer, or the right question, the more appropriate question is, it's not just are you willing, but are you willing to pay the price? Because crossing over, it is not, uh, what is this? Uh, it's not automatic. Crossing over is not just, you know, a blink of an eye. There are price that you need to pay. Now the Bible said, once we need a while, it said that it is in this time of all of all of the any day, any season where God could bring his people to the promised land, it was in this time where the river bank of uh, Jordan was overflowing. The river was impassable. The river 
is quite uh, difficult, you know, to be crossed over. Can you imagine? Are you still with me? Yeah. Have you have you tried to cross, you know, in a uh, in a flood? Where it is it is a no answer, you know, uh, to go at the other side. It's dangerous. As those people were standing, they were thinking of the promise. The Father was telling them. God Almighty telling them, I shall, I shall bring you into a land that flows with milk and honey. And they, they were very happy. I mean, they were ecstatic. But then what was before them was a flood. Now the price God telling them, I'd like us to close our eyes for a while. At least raise both of our hands. You close your eyes and say, Almighty God, I am willing. Help me to be willing to pay the price. Amen. Can we give him a clap of praise? God's direction to them, the priest, the family of Levi, was to carry the Ark of the Covenant. You know that box is the symbol of the physical presence of God living with the nation of Israel. And they were to go ahead of uh, the congregation. The promise, the promise of the Lord, soon as the feet of this priest can dip into the waters in the middle of the river, God will stop the waters upstream. And the Lord's promise went on further, God will provide a dry river bed for the people that even sleeping over cannot happen. It's going to be a smooth walk. You know, this generation heard about Moses' time and about their parents' time where they crossed in the middle of uh, the Red Sea where the, the bottom, you know, was dried by God. They, they walked on a smooth road and the walls the walls beside them were walls of, you know, ocean waters. When you could see all of the creatures amazed as well, wondering, all of those, you know, gigantic creatures under the sea were wondering, hey, what's ha what happened? First time they, they saw human beings, and not just one or two, I mean, they saw two million human beings crossing. That's why even I can just imagine how those, you know, uh, fishes, Sea creatures were wondering what was happening. They heard of those story. But here now, God was about to duplicate. It wasn't on an ocean again. It was in a river. Raging and boisterous river. And the Lord said, You are going to walk in the middle of the river. Hello, amen? I heard of a story. There, there was this cyclist, uh, amazing cyclist. He made this usual exhibition and people would applaud him. And everybody very happy and excited to what they see. I mean, they really were amused. Can you imagine? The cyclist would have to cross over a ravine. And to cross, you know, the ravine uh, using a bicycle just just in a one single row. I mean, you know, in just a thread of a row. Imagine, that must be amazing. Everybody really become excited. I mean, it was, it was such a show. Doing it back and forth. People really, you know, starting to yell, ah! Man, you must, wow, you must be, uh, you must be outstanding. I mean, all of those people, you just imagine. But then the same cyclist, you know, looked back to the to the crowd and said, "Here is the next trick, the the upgrade trick. I need someone to volunteer and to ride with me as I cross over." And there was a silence. Hello, Adriel, and she was surprised and struck, oh struck, when. Uh, the angel appeared 
However, she was able to dis, uh, assimilate what is what she saw, and the angel talked to her. The Lord, uh, the angel said, "Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed are going to be the fruit of your womb." As she was wondering what the angel was telling, the angel would have to explain in detail what to happen to the life of this young woman, a damsel. 14 year old the reality and uh, the literal meaning what about to happen to you you will bear a child and the baby that you will carry in your womb for nine months will be the savior of the world will be the messiah a 14 year old and experienced woman she never had a boyfriend Though she was to marry, she was to wed following year because she was betrothed. Now I'm talking here of a biblical custom where two pairs would go for a marriage even if they have not met personally or even if they don't have any feeling whatsoever in either, in either party where the parents are the ones are arranging the marriage. Are you still with me? Amen? Yeah. That was the case of Mary. So she was figuring out how can that happen? Did you, did you did you read the story? Have you read the story? You remember the story? And the angel tried to explain, the archangel Gabriel tried to explain the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and it's going to be a miracle. And she still was not understanding yet. But then instead of disbelieving, insisting, insisting to know it cannot happen. The young woman, the damsel, rather replied to Jane to the angel by saying, be, a, be it unto me according to your word. And so the miracle started. The miracle after she said, be it unto me according to your word. The miracle began to happen that moment, that second, and the womb started to contract. And there was the fetus. Are you with me, amen? Now okay. look to someone else and say, it ain't free, come on. It is not free. The price in crossing to the other side is a price of faith and a price of obedience. Say with me, faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. Can you believe? Can you obey? They were standing now on the river bank. Only minutes. They were about to dip in the waters. The, the priest, the rather the sons of Aaron. I mentioned sons of Levi, you know, sons of Aaron. They were about to cross, or they were about to dip into the water. Surely it happened. As four of the priests in their garden started to walk into the waters maybe they were falling bigger drops of uh, sweat because they never had experienced this you know the feeling the sense doing something for the first time and you're not so sure what to happen in all you're holding are you are trust you're only trusting to the direction of god because god cannot commit error Amen. God cannot commit mistake. And indeed, as the Lord promised, when they stood in the middle of the waters, the water started to recede. And there was this wall. The Bible said, in a graphic illustration, the water retreated. And it became a wall. Because at that time, it was the season of the flood. The water was so huge, I mean the volume, the deluge was, was uh, so immense that the wall of water started to go up higher and higher, so high. I don't know how many meters it went up. When we will get into heaven with eternity, our eternity will start. One of the questions I like to suggest, you will ask to Jesus, well, Lord, can you show me how did it happen? Are you with me? Amen. Amen. And the people were starting to be in mixed emotions. Because as they crossed over 
For how many years all the eight were manna? As, and as they entered into the land, they were the generation who had it where the reality of the promise happened. For the first time, they ate the produce of the fruit. First time, they ate corn. First time, they eat, they drink, brother, or they drunk, brother, a real wine, fresh wine. First time, they, they ate, you know, honey, but it's not preserved. First time they were able to tread soil because for 40 years all they were treading, all they were walking were sand dunes. Can you imagine in the whole of your life, have you reached already 40 years old, all you could eat every single day were ground corn. Rice was just a dream for you. Now all you could eat, all you could your mother could afford was, you know, the small fishes. Now all your parents could afford to give you were used clothing of your cousins. And all the while God's smiling on you, looking on you and telling you, I can do things better for you, my child. Amen. Amen. And, you, and your tears are falling from your eyes and you somehow cannot believe what God is about to do. And you're wondering, can that happen? Can that happen? And God replied to you back, yes, my child, it can happen because to me, nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a call. I wish, I wish what we read it uh, with my son can be presented, but you know, technology, the advantage of it, but they're, they're, uh, they're, on, their side, they're on another side, the downside of uh, disadvantages. You know, I'm not sure if there are buyers that uh, uh, were able to intrude my my memory, my memory, uh, my memory card, or rather my my USB. I I had it, I had it uh, recorded for twice myself and my son. I wish I could have shown it to you. Uh, what is this? A commercial, an infomercial. Are you still there? Amen. You promised me you gotta go. You gotta give me your undivided attention. Now, that's someone did say your undivided attention. <laughs> Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say I love you, Jesus. Come on, we give the Lord a clap. This infomercial. Uh, was shoot or was shot brother in a mall in Manila. It was a challenge. Uh, the information was about this guy. Actually, what only was wearing a short. And uh, the challenge was anyone willing to drop in uh, in this container a 600 peso. Perhaps you've seen this already. And, uh, you know, 600 pesos in our time now is quite expensive already. You cannot just waste your 600, isn't it? Amen? Hello? If you go into a mall and there, there is a total stranger who tell you, hey, give up your 600. An amazing thing will happen to you. And everybody just laugh, hey, right? I cannot do that. That cannot happen. No, no. 600. Oh, it's good for me. This is good for my, you know, for, if, if you're single for my girl, my girlfriend and I. If you're a husband, this is, you know, good for a day, uh, day budget in the house. I mean, really for such a period of time, there are no willing uh, individuals to drop for the challenge, six hundred to the container, until there was this woman. God interested. Got curious, and she said, I think I'm about to drop 600. I was thinking perhaps the one who created the idea of this infomercial was a Christian, because the man yelled, keep to yell, oh, join with me for a leap of faith. I'd like us to say one more time, faith and obedience. Faith. No, I didn't hear you. Say loud and say, faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. And the woman closed her eyes placed her palm to her eyes and dropped the 600. Well, there was no 
uh, Lao Kong. No, nothing. What is this extraordinary that happened? But split of seconds, one to the other, there were individuals appearing from different corners. The first was a man who gave a mini iPad to the woman. The next was another man appearing who gave an iPhone C5 or S5? 5S. 5S. On and on. And the woman was overloaded with many benefits. And the last, the man who challenged the woman because the man was only a representative of such a huge company, opened that the container and took again the 600 and returned the 600 to the woman. And all of the bystanders who laughed and said, I cannot do it. 600, they just shook their head. I could have been that person. I could have been that person. And the woman who closed her eyes, oh, anyways, I'm gonna drop this 600 with summer joy. Think about it, the 600 return back to her with all of the benefits. I could just think of it, ladies and gentlemen, that's how our God does the same into our lives. Amen. Amen. When He comes to us and tells us and challenges, His challenges seem to be too impossible to happen. But let me tell you, those are the art of God. God's expertise, God's expertise, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, is to create the impossible to become possible. Amen. Amen. Man which he cannot do, God is able to do it for you and for me because He loves us. Amen. Amen. Let's give Him a clap of praise. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Let me say it once again as I mentioned a while. God wants to bring, God wants to already bring us across to our promised land. Many things, many good things will start to happen to us. Way beginning how many days ago and we are in this trouble and expect them. However, I'd like to warn us, are you still there? Amen? Amen. So far, to the generation who are not able to make it to the other side, this way the reasons. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. I mentioned that a while already. Their stubbornness and their unbelief. Sometimes there are these situations to happen to us where God seemingly intentionally embarrasses you. That to the extent of like you're too much embarrassed, you would have you would have wanted not to anymore return to the man who called you. I'm talking about God. God would embarrass you or God would expose you rather into such an experience. I mean uh, too hard, too painful, I mean, too, too traumatic to describe that, you know, at the side or at the back, at the back of your head, you could come to God again and say, God Almighty, let's, let's call it a quick now. Are you still there? There was this passage in Deuteronomy. For three days the people went hungry. Imagine three days. And they started to grumble. They started to complain. And they started to blame God. Did you bring us only to this place to kill us? Yeah, because there are no graves in Egypt. And God, after three days, gave them food. Over and above that they could contain. There were these quails coming down. The Moses gave an account, calling back to what had happened. And Moses said, God only tested us because man does not lead by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. 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 Uh, in our earlier ministry, there were these people. Uh, we try to share the Word of God and uh, give the love of the Father to them. But they easily turn the backs. And there were those who listened 
and stayed for a while. But later on, as well, turned the backs. But there were those many as well, thank God, who listened and gave their lives to God, gave their commitment to God, and gave their loyalty to the church. And some of those are you already. Thank God. Eh? <laughs> Let's give the Lord a club of praise. It's kind of like hurting. By the way, did you try and experience such? When you shared the, the love of God and people turned the back, how it felt to you? Eric. Did you want to like, oh, if I could just curse you? I just did curse actually, Pastor. Did the Bible say, you know, when a person's, I mean, a family as I'm willing to, I, I'm willing to receive the word of God, Jesus didn't say, didn't Jesus say, you can shake the dust out from your feet and the curse of God would come to them? Oh, it's actually a quotation uh, out of context. You, you are making a quote out of context. Because God did come, Jesus did come to seek and to save and to curse. Are you with me? Amen. But how about those who committed for a while and then the backs? And later on I just realized that it's just but a test, it's just but a price that we needed to pay. That when you love, we must love unconditionally. Amen. How will you love? Will you love, will you just love those people who are, who are lovable? Or even to those that are unlovable. Amen? I just cannot believe how in the world Jesus could continue to love Judas. Where he knew from the very beginning that he was a thief. Where Judas was eventually being the traitor to betray him. He must be very amazing. Our master, our Jesus must be very amazing. Amen? Let's give him a clap of praise. So let's be very careful. The first warning: let's not be disturbed, let's not be stubborn, and let's not be unbelieving. Amen. Amen. The second: the people, some of them were not able to cross at the other side because when they saw the fertile land of the Jordan Valley, that allowed them to stay. You know, some of them, uh, the. The tribes of Reuben and Manasseh and the half-tribe of Levi, well, later on, they were able to make a negotiation, a compromise with Moses or with Joshua. That, you know, the, the, uh, the other side of Jordan, or this, the other side of the Promised Land, going to be an extension of uh, the nation or the state of Israel. Now, they call it colony. You, you understanding what is a colony? Colony is not your actually part of the mainland, but rightfully, by inheritance or by claim, that, that still becomes yours. That's why colony. Say the word colony. So when they reach to the, you know, to the valley of the Jordan, because the Jordan Valley is very fertile, of the overflow of the seals from above, I mean from where the, the, river, the river Jordan came from, they were so allured and they were, you know, we uh, cast off restraint and they said, oh, we'll just stay here. We'll not go on the other side. In fact, God was even a little offended and the whole of the nation was offended because God, God's word was to bring them into the promised land. Now listen to me. When we receive initial blessings, allow the blessings of God to draw you closer to God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Rather, do not allow the blessings to draw your attention and your heart far and far away from the Lord. Because the blessings are not yet the real stuffs. They are yet more to come would we stay faithful, would we stay on fire and loyal to God continually. Amen. Constantly. Are still with me? Amen. Amen. And maybe I would like to close my message uh, with bringing you to Matthew chapter 9. 
verses 36 to 38. This one I'm quite familiar. Thirty-six to thirty-nine, or thirty-eight. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, "The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send our laborers, our laborers into the harvest. The work of God. Everyone says the work of God." The work of God is so huge. God is calling out men and women who will be willing to become laborers. The Lord told the twelve, you pray. That God will send laborers. This was a long time prayer request already. We call this even, let us pray for the harvesters to come, for the laborers for the harvest to come. How about instead of just praying by coming to God and saying, Lord, I want to be the answer of the prayer. Huh? Amen? Amen. Instead of, Lord, please see the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers of you, please, Lord, send laborers oh, to cast their sickle and to harvest. To harvest the field. Instead of saying or doing so, nothing wrong, but here is one better. How about coming to God Almighty, raising your hand, Lord, falling your tears and saying, Lord, here I, here am I, here my life I'm giving to you. And I just thought, God, my life, but all that I am and all that I have, including my resources, I'm giving to you. Please, Lord, can I use me, can I use me? Are you with me, amen? Yeah. We're about to make that in a while. Give me one more minute. Esther. Esther became queen because it was it was her destiny. Amen. Did you read? Have you read the story of Esther? Now listen to me. You and I got a destiny. Our destiny is greatness. Amen. Amen. I like us to play some on just to say, my destiny is greatness. My destiny is greatness. But her destiny did not come only for self-service. Her destiny did not come to her only to enjoy. Her destiny was for the whole nation, the entire nation, because a time or the time came where she became the deliverer of the whole nation. If you know the story. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in such a moment, in such a time, our generation, where you and I are like Esther. God will kind of use us to be the deliverers of the 21st century. Amen? Amen. In your own capacity, in your own field that God is is raising you up. Amen? Amen? So God is bound to bless you. God is bound to bring you to greatness. But listen to this, brothers and sisters. As the Lord will bring you to the other side, bringing you to the other side is a test of faith and obedience. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. You receive it? Hallelujah. Let's all stand. We're going to pray.